Hello, welcome. My name is Nolifis, and today I'm going over my tips on how to make routes more exciting. After all, a route can be well made, perfectly calculated, and really boring. And this is where I felt my maps were for the longest time. Well, maybe not the perfectly calculated part or the well made part, but you know what? They were decent, a little boring, but decent. And after looking at what better maps were doing, I was surprised at how consistently things popped up. Even relatively simple maps used at least a couple of the techniques I'm going to talk about. Now, I always build with these in mind. And if I don't include them, it's a purposeful choice. If you're in the same boat I was, or simply looking for a bit of advice, I hope this video helps. So let's get started. This first one is the simplest. No dead zones. I've talked about this a few times in the past, so I'm not going to go into a ton of detail, but basically the player should always be doing something, lining up for the next element, nailing a drift, maintaining a speed slide, etc. Something has to be happening. What you're trying to avoid is the player sitting there and holding a single input for several seconds. The obvious culprit I see a lot are straight lines, not Always the easiest to spot, but look for these at the beginning of the map, as well as in between elements where the mapper leaves a bit too much room to set up. Cutting these are simple. Look for what the straight line is accomplishing and see if you can scrunch it down. Try a turbo if you want the player to gain speed, or keep watching to see what else you can do to make a long stretch not boring. Sorry, no spoilers. But straight lines aren't the only thing I'm talking about. After all, I said dead zones, and a popular dead zone I keep seeing, and have built myself, are large jumps. They're exciting at first, but become boring after playing the map a few times, as once you're in the air, there's not much you can do. Release gas or press brake to fall sooner, or hold accelerate to jump farther, and that's just about it. Not to mention the longer the jump, the harder it is to line up the landing, or compensate for the large variety of speeds players are going to have. Large jumps are flashy at first, but quickly become much more tedious than they're worth, and that's just for the builder. Players can't do much in the air, and they're just waiting to land to start playing again, and no one likes loading screens in the middle of their map. See? That buffering wasn't very fun. I can't speak too much for other people, but I load the game to play it, and having to wait on the map itself isn't very exciting. You could even say it's boring. And learning how to spot and cut those dead zones in a route means the action is more evenly spread out, giving the player more reason to try again, and again, and again. This next one can be a bit of a mixed bag, depending on how you handle it. Some people love it, some people hate it, but either way, skill checks can help add some excitement into a map. But what do I mean by a skill check? These come in several different forms, but they all have the same idea. How good are you? Let's find out. An argument could be made that nearly everything in a map is some form of a skill check. It's just about how severe of a check it is. Some very simple checks are how good the player is at holding a speed slide or maintaining speed after a drift. Basically, try to think of elements that would have you losing time to the top players. Taking a simple turn a little wide might have you lose a tenth, but some drifts followed by a cruise control block might have you losing over a full second. Adding a variety of skill check severities can help good players stand out and make the push to shave the last few tenths for an author time an accomplishment, rather than a tedious grind. If players are saying the route is too simple, you might want to add a few more skill checks. That way, there's a difference between a clean run and a fast one. All because someone makes it through the route without crashing doesn't guarantee a top time, and there's still a lot to explore in terms of getting an optimal run. But that's not all a skill check is. Sometimes they're a bit more brutal. Skill checks can help good players build a lead over the rest of the player base, but sometimes you want to make sure only good players can finish a map in the first place. A common example of this is known as a speed check, a jump that's only possible to make if the car has enough speed. Another example can be a sort of difficult obstacle, maybe a pipe turn, bug slide, or something. The focus of the more brutal skill checks aren't necessarily to let the players gain time over others, but to block certain players from reaching the finish at all, sort of like a gatekeeper. As you can imagine, this can be very frustrating depending on how harsh these gates are. And I wouldn't recommend these harsher skill checks if you're going for something like track of the day. But the maps that focus on these checks can be extremely rewarding to finally get, and not every map needs to be built for everyone to complete. 
After all, trial maps exist for a reason and are decently popular, but whether or not your skill checks are harsh or soft, they're a great way to make a map much more competitive, making that world record or author time feel much more earned, and forcing players to think actively about what they're doing, looking for those small adjustments to save a bit of time. Next up is a skill I've been trying to learn myself, but transitions can be tough. Well, good transitions. Nadeo provides quite a few transition blocks from one surface to another, and these are great, but also a bit boring. They're plain, and everyone has seen them hundreds of times before. To help spice up your route, learning how to put together a smooth custom transition can be a huge help. Unfortunately, it's not easy. Generally speaking, transitions should be smooth, intuitive, and not have a lot of airtime. Some of them can be challenging to get right, but the goal has to be clear. The excitement comes from driving a series of blocks that might not look super clean to begin with and realizing it's actually really smooth. Not to mention that transitions tend to punish being on the wrong line, so it's also a great way to naturally force players back on track after a wider element. Because of how open-ended the theme of transitions are, they are hard to get right. All because it's smooth and intuitive for you doesn't mean it'll be the same for players who have never seen the element before. And I've definitely had to remove some transitions from my maps that I thought were clear, but players kept complaining about them no matter what I did. To help, there are a couple of great resources people have made. Oso has made a guide on which blocks are similar in height, and is a perfect tool for seeing which to use if you want a close step down onto another surface. Ski Freak has a mapping web page, and at the bottom there's a selection of transitions you can use. They're even organized, so you can see some ideas going from one surface to another. Links to both of these will be in the description. Because they're so useful and widely popular, transitions are the rare case where it's okay to steal. I'm saying that carefully. The trick is to only use the block specific to the transition and not the elements surrounding them. The originality of the map should come from the twists and turns, not necessarily from the transitions themselves. But that being said, if you have your own ideas, feel free to go for it. If you can get good at making or applying transitions, it's one of those skills that can be used on nearly every map, regardless of style or surface, and is perfect for spicing up a normal, boring section. It's also one of the best ways to introduce my next tip. Elevation Changes Basically, Trackmania is a game that takes place in three dimensions, so use them. Having everything happen on one level can literally make your route fall flat. Being able to see the route ahead twisting and turning above and below helps create a lot of visual interest as well as helps inform the player on what's coming up. A common complaint about flat maps is the heavy reliance on scenery to guide the player through what's going on, and if the scenery isn't fantastic, the map can quickly become confusing and boring. You don't need the car to go climbing up a giant wall, but figuring out where to put some uphill or downhill sections goes a long way. For example, instead of having a flat turn, try banking the turn and starting slash ending the curve at different elevations. Or, instead of a giant jump, have it be a sort of speed check where you have to have enough speed to smoothly jump to the top of a tower. If you want the player to gain speed, try out a downhill instead of a turbo. Uphill elements, such as turns, are also a great way to slow the player down. You get the picture. Not every map needs to have extreme elevation changes to be exciting, but I think every map could benefit from at least a bit. At the very least, it makes the building process easier in terms of not having elements be too similar, especially for styles built around one skill, such as tech. It can be a challenge to have each corner be different and not just a copy-paste all over the map. Having some turns change elevation makes it so much easier to have those different corners, so be sure to diversify a bit. I'd also like to go into a bit more detail on what I said earlier. Transitions are some of the best ways to start slash introduce elevation changes, whether that be a small jump or transferring to a slanted surface. The sausage block specifically is really good for that, and it's what you see most often. But loading up a good transitional map and seeing what they do to change elevation can be really good inspiration to start adding these elements to your own creations. Whether or not you decide to use those transitions, I highly recommend giving those flat maps a boost and making them a bit more exciting. Before I wrap things up, I do want to go over some quick miscellaneous tips. 
I mentioned it quickly in the previous section, but be sure to include a variety of elements. Don't use the same ones over and over again. Driving a map that reuses the same turn a few times makes me think that the mapper ran out of ideas or got a bit lazy. It can also hurt the readability of the map as players can get a bit confused when trying to remember what comes next. Wait, does the speed check come after the second or third time I take this turn? Seems like a bit of a nitpick, but if you're trying to get through map review, first impressions are all you get, so it can be very important. My next tip is adding obstacles. Yes, you heard me. Hole spam is not only correct, it's the morally right thing to do. Okay, maybe not to that extent. Holes can be used to keep the player on the intended line by force. For instance, if you have a dirt turn where you're meant to exit on the inside, near the end of the turn you can put poles on the outside, and players should get the idea to get off the wall. They can also be used to help people through a transition. If the transition only works when the car is on the left side of the road, then blocking off the right side forces the player to drive it the intended way. The main thing you want to avoid with poles is placing them directly on the best line, or choking out the entry to a drift. Players shouldn't have to be dodging a bunch of poles unless it's a slalom, and drifts are easy to mess up anyway, so don't block the entry, block the exit. I know I've been saying poles this entire time, but you can really use anything to block the path. Poles are the most common, but anything goes. Pick something that fits the theme of the map, such as in my map, Bubble Bath, I didn't use poles. I used bubbles, which leads me to my last tip, scenery. I did make an entire video dedicated to making your scenery look good, but I'll talk a little more here about how to make it exciting. The main point, such as what I did on Bubble Bath, is to have the scenery interact with the map. One aspect is having scenery block off parts of the map, but another idea is to have the player drive through. If there's a jump, make the player fly through a hole in the scenery. This not only makes the element a bit more exciting, but can also help the player aim for where they're supposed to go. Basically, having a few elements to the scenery the player has to pay attention to and isn't just meant for looking good can help with some of the immersion of the map and make it a bit more exciting to drive. To recap, if people keep saying your route is boring, plain, or simple, keep an eye out for dead zones where not much is happening. Try adding a few skill checks such as drifts, speed checks, or speed slides. Don't just settle for the boring Nadeo transitions. Add in a few elevation changes, use a variety of elements and turns, make the players avoid some obstacles, and put in some scenery the player can't ignore. If you try at least a few of these tips, your routes will be much more exciting. I want to thank you guys for watching my video. If you found it useful, maybe give it a like. In case you're new and want to see more Trackmania mapping content, it's pretty much all I do here, and I would like it if you considered subscribing. If you want feedback on your own maps, I do viewer map review on my Twitch every Wednesday night starting at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So follow me on Twitch and submit your maps. I think that's all of the self-advertising out of the way, and I would like to thank you again for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. I really do appreciate it. But now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to make a 20 minute long endurance map with a speed check finish. Bye!